done, we went ahead and cut a separation. We hit our pickle fork inside, uh, which opened it up obviously. And then as you saw, we torched, uh, then we actually quenched the outside. We need to smack that off. And we've got a slightly larger gap than what we started with. And what that's going to allow us to do, and I'll example on this shock, although I'm doing it on the opposite side, is it'll allow this shock to seat inside a little bit more easily. So we can just simply tap it, and we can tap it in. Now, we actually have to modify the shock, uh, but not too much. So before, there was, this actually closed around with a slip fitting that was attached to the hub, and then there was a bolt that ran through here. Sound means we're done. We bottomed out on this piece here. Still gives us most of the pipe, probably about just over a half, about five eighths uh, of the entire pipe. So 62.5% for the nerds out there uh, into this pipe. Now the GSX subframe and the lower control arm that we've welded in does sit about two inches lower. So this inch and a half here will actually make perfectly with the top of the hub. When I had the car parked and set up um, and took out the old engine, uh, the, the jack stands were actually at the perfect height where the tire would just graze the ground uh, when it was going on in the hub. And right now, as you can see, even if we put this hub, we obviously can't fit a 16 inch wheel and tire setup on here. So that's going to change a little bit. Of course, we did lower the lower control arm two inches, so that's probably about how extra low it is. So I'm literally doing the opposite of lowering my car. And then as I go up, I do have quite a bit of suspension travel upwards, and I can adjust that and create more travel if I need. But I look like I should be okay. And then I'll put my L brackets like this reinforce uh, with some gussets on either sides of the bolts and then do that on both sides and I'll be able to just zip the bolts into here what we're working with let me show you the suspension travel we'll go through it here all right and that maxes out my jack and obviously the wheel won't fit up here and there's still more travel left in the uh, in the lower control arm mount that I made. So obviously we don't need that much, uh, which is perfect. Means that we are able to uh, fully weld that in place and not worry about clearances or anything like that, um, which is going to be awesome. Let's put this at ride height. So ride height, we're hoping have the lower control arm relatively level, maybe a little bit. Uh, angled down from level and the axles to be relatively straight so that we don't have much power loss going to the suspension basically the, the best whole shot traction um, I you know of course when, when the suspension loads it's going to move a bit but uh, in terms of cruising and flat out we'll, we'll have some pretty good power So what I'm doing here, uh, I'm basically bending this bracket to make a custom fit. And the easiest way for me to do that, uh, instead of starting with flat stock, is either start with square tubing or, in this case, some angle iron. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm applying a relief cut and then bending the way I want so that I get either the angle. So in this first cut, I cut and I twisted it just a little bit and then welded it back in place. I can shave it down later. Um, and then I did another relief cut here, and that's going to allow me to bend it the other direction now. So this gives me a lot of rigidity while I'm working, but I can always make a cut and allow my, myself to bend on a certain axis. So in this case, I'm going to clamp it in the vise here, and I got my notes from under the car, which is I need to rotate it this way and get about a quarter of an inch of uh, extra angle on that top side. And that's going to allow me 
to basically get this to meet flush with the surface that I'm trying to bolt onto spot in place and that allows me to relatively easily and even while still talking bend this and I totally forgot what I was doing and naturally I bent it way more than a quarter of an inch so now I can still bend it back though Alright, so this might be a little bit hard to see with everything going on. That is still hot. So, as you saw, I cut the slit down the middle of this. First thing I want to do is figure out where I'm going to put these, but in order to figure out where these are going, I need to figure out how far apart they are. So, my plan, what I did for the first one here, was I basically drilled the holes first, and that let me get the spacing. And then from there, I mounted it to the hub and tacked it in place. So like I said, we just got two, they're not even good tacks, it's just a lot of weld there. Uh, but we're going to do a dual pass, fill it weld on this deep inside, get that wire as far in as we can, weld that there, do the same on this side, that tack's a little, anyway, um, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're not going to weld on the inside because it's hard to get the torch angle to get actually in there. Eventually we're going to cut this inside out, but uh, it just helped us line it up. And then, once we had that spacing confirmed, we tested it on the car, made sure everything fit. Uh, after it was fully welded, make sure we didn't have too much distortion. And from there, what we ended up doing was we added in some bracing here. And this bracing basically allows your uh, clamping ability to not only pull from further back in the, in the tube that's squeezing the uh, bottom of the strut, it also acts as reinforcing gussets. So if we just did our welds here at the corner, which we welded before we put the plate on, basically these mounts would be able to flex, and over time you'd either have cracking in your weld joint, you'd have a lot of uh, fatiguing, you'd have basically that piece would be flexing in and out as the strut compressed, and as you got a lot of torsional load and everything, just basically squeeze the shit out of the mount. And that really sucks. We ended up also reinforcing this uh, L bracket. This uh, angle iron, and because it's eighth inch thick, we took some eighth inch flat stock that's the same width and welded it on top. We welded in the middle, fully around the outside. Uh, we didn't weld inside here because we didn't want to interfere with the nut or the bolt that went through there. With the original mount that I did, it actually looked like this. And what we ended up doing um, was we cut a little bit more of the shocks so that this sat deeper in the strut assembly and we actually cut that down um, about three quarters of an inch here. So we ended up getting three quarters of an inch and about a half inch on the other side. So we ended up getting about an inch and a quarter lower than the raise that we have. So that puts our right head or lower control arms almost flat and our axle is almost flat as well. Um, they're not at the exact same angle, uh, but I don't have that angle. I just bought a angle finder, um, a digital gauge with a magnetic uh, mount, so I'll be able to actually measure that accurately now and figure out, cool, what's the difference between the two axles? I can measure my caster, so I get the exact caster. I can get my uh, camber settings approximately correct. I'm um, still so gonna take it for an alignment, but I wanna make sure I have the adjustability. I wanna make sure if I wanna go max camber that I can get two or two and a half degrees if I need for any ridiculous reason, and I don't do for looks, so knock it off, YouTube. Um, or if I need to go zero, I just want to make sure I'm able to actually get anywhere within that range for performance reasons, depending on the track that I'm running or whatever, whatever. Um, so that's the plan. So the last remaining thing with this, we have welded it. We need to grind off some of the spatter, um, and none of the welds are really super proud anyway, so we won't have to worry about grinding those down. They don't look perfect, but at the same time, I'm, I'm a function person, and to me, they look pretty much as good as MIG is going to look for the most part, minus the spatter or whatever, and my stop starts, but other than that, it's fine. So, I'm going to grind it down, and then I'm going to chop it so that it is the exact same length of this, so that way our ride height isn't changed substantially. So, hopefully the camera is still on, did ramble a little bit, but... That is what we are doing.